asking. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. All right. Good morning, everybody. We're the Dakota Community College team from New Orleans, and we'll be talking about Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. So for this project, we made sure to contact every airport responsible for the airspaces in which we worked in with respective time. This way, we could avoid any conflicts. We, we reported the balloons to launch coordinates, launch time, predictive flight trajectory, and path to all these said airports. And even then, we, with all these preparations, we still encountered some problems. And here's my colleague, Sheldon. Um, special thanks goes out to our concierge, Miss Priscilla, um, for being a great help during our stay at the Spring Hill Suites. Um, you know, she made calls for us for free, uh, helped print our materials out for free, and we took over the whole lobby of the hotel. We had equipment everywhere, wires, computers, um, radio sounds, radio stations. So, um, you know, shout out goes up for really being a, a big help. Um, as far as our launch, we launched behind the hotel. Um, first two launches went well. Uh, come the third, fourth, fifth launch, everything went kind of, kind of sour because we were in a high traffic area. Um, so everything kind of went downhill from there. I'm gonna let Cullen take it from there. Yeah. So our original launch location had a high volume of air traffic. Uh, changes in the weather had plans of us sleeping in the parking lot, which quickly turned into a panic to pack and uh, find a new launch location. We quickly worked together to find a new launch location and have all of our gear packed in under an hour. Here's Sam to explain some more. Yeah, once they shut us down in San Antonio, uh, we all immediately started uh, calling around and uh, Google Maps and trying to find another location for us to launch, you know, and uh, it was looking pretty bleak for a while until uh, Jerry Arispe at One Stop Shop LTX uh, right outside of San Antonio. Uh, he accepted our group of nerds and let us come use his property to stare at the sun. Uh, you know, his family was really welcoming. As you can see in the picture, we, uh, we let his son hold a balloon. Uh, to get that picture and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, uh, tremendous thanks goes out to them. They kind of saved our whole trip out there because uh, once we got shut down, you know, we had they had to make make changes, you know, make, move it around. But uh, we had considerable cloud cover out there that day. So uh, during the totality, we uh, went on a chase to find the sun. And my colleague Darian will tell you more about it. So as the eclipse events predicted time approached, there was sudden cloud cover. So we adapted by looking at live cloud cover maps to locate a sunny area. It took roughly 20 minutes of driving to find an area with an unobstructed view of the eclipse. Using a cut lens from the solar glasses taped to a phone camera, we were able to capture clear footage of the eclipse. And continuing on is my colleague, Joseph. And with that clear footage, we got a beautiful view of the ring of fire. And with that, I would like to end this off by thanking our sponsors at 1881 and Anna's Place. And I'd like to thank our team at Dillard and our team at Delgado. And a special thanks to Dr. Rivers for setting all this up and getting the grants. That's it. Thank you, everybody. Wow, that was great. Uh, you ended with uh, 30 seconds to spare. And uh, I, I have to commend you. Your team uh, exhibited incredible agility there. Uh, uh, with that launch. So, okay. Uh, James, I'll wait on you to stop.